This entitled mum thinks that being a single mum is the same as having a disability. But she's about to learn the hard way that she's not as entitled as she thinks she is. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the show. This happened back when I was around 11 or 12 years old. Many years before entitled parents became an everyday occurrence or at least as frequently recognized as it is today. So at this time, my family had just moved to a new town. I had started a new school, made some new friends, and the June holidays had just started. I guess I should add that I'm South African, so we have several short holidays every year, as opposed to the extended holiday you guys have in the States. The June holidays was the long one though, which ran for around three weeks. As this was my first holiday in my new town, and I already had quite a few new friends, I had made a lot of holiday plans and was pretty psyched. Unfortunately though, my mother had different plans for me. Before I continue, I should mention that my mother passed away around three years after this, so even though she was mostly to blame for what happened here, I'll appreciate everyone talking about her respectfully. My mother was a decent enough mother in person, yet she always felt the need to impress others. I mean, she would do anything to make herself look good, quite often shooting us in both feet to accomplish this. Shortly after we had moved to the new town, my mother had befriended a married couple that lived up the street. The couple were parents to three adorable younglings, consisting of the bratty youngest brother that would go into fits of screaming to get his way, the middle sister that was actually quite well-mannered and behaved, and the oldest, this eight-year-old ginger kid with severe anger issues. I wonder if he's in jail yet. So the first day of my holiday arrived, to be fair, I didn't have any particular plans for that day, which was why I didn't mind when my mother dragged me along to go visit her new friends. We arrived and I was sent to the playroom to hang out with the kids, although it was awkward as I was too old to really play with them, but also too young to sit with the adults. This really wasn't anything out of the ordinary, so I waited the afternoon out, allowing my mother to enjoy the day with her friends. What I was unaware of though, was that during the course of that afternoon, my mother had volunteered me to look after the kids the very next day. The next day rolled around, and at around 10am, the parents showed up to drop their spawn off at our place. They politely thanked me for volunteering to watch their kids, and drove off. Now, I should mention that the kids had been pretty well behaved the previous day, so although I wasn't ecstatic about spending another day with them, I wasn't furious about it either. However, with their parents no longer around, the little demons were about to crawl out of the shadows. It started fairly simple. The youngest one complained that he was hungry, and the eldest started whining too. I went to the kitchen to make them sandwiches, only to hear the little ones screaming from the lounge area. I had put a bunch of toys out for them to play with, and the two boys were now fighting over it, with the oldest one having pinned the youngest down on the floor. I confiscated the toy and told them that if they can't share, then neither of them will get to play with it, and returned to the kitchen to finish their sandwiches. The toy I had confiscated lay on the counter next to me. Mere seconds later, the youngest one came marching in, demanding to know how far the sandwiches were. I told them they were almost done. He demanded I cut them into tiny squares, because that's the only way he would eat them. I shrugged and obliged. I carried the plate of sandwiches back to the living room, only for the youngest to stuff three into his mouth at the same time and then spit them out, yelling he doesn't eat Bovril, my favorite sandwich spread product. While this was going on, the oldest brat had run into the kitchen and stolen back the toy I had confiscated. The youngest one saw this and started screaming again. Cut forward many hours, their parents finally returned and asked if they had behaved themselves. I was about to give them a mouthful, but my mother cut me off and told the parents that they had been absolutely delightful. She lost so many brownie points at that moment, but not nearly as many as she lost the next day when my mother, quite proudly I might add, announced to me that she'd agreed that we'll watch the kids for the bulk of the holidays, every day while the parents were at work. I was mad. OMG, I was so mad. So the very next day, the mother comes and drops the kids off again, thanking me profusely for being willing to do this and promising that she'll make this worth my while. I would hold on to that fantasy for the remainder of this holiday from heck. 
Now, obviously, I'm not going to describe every single day I spent with these brats, as one, the post would become longer than The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and two, this was 18 years ago, so I don't remember too much. In fact, it's more likely that the playdate I already described probably only happened later, but I just wanted to give you a basic understanding of what my day with them had been like. However, there is one night I remember very well, and this is where we shall be cutting to, and is also the reason I'm posting this story on the subreddit. It was the last Saturday of my school holidays, and my dear mother had again dragged me over to watch the kids, while she hung out with her friends. By this time, I had watched these kids somewhere between 14 and 18 times. I had yet to see a dime of this grand reward that was promised to me. I'd also begun to loathe these kids. Well, the two boys. The girl never gave me any trouble. So I was again sitting bored in the playroom, take into account that this was before the time of cell phones, so I literally had nothing to do but sit there and watch them. It wasn't long before the two brothers started fighting again. By this time I had broken them up so many times that I didn't even have a reaction to it anymore. So I just stood up and pulled them apart. This time though, their reaction was a lot more severe and the oldest brother started punching and kicking me. I fought the little brat off quite easily, only to be attacked by the youngest one. For anyone witnessing this from outside, it may have looked like we were playing, but these kids were legitimately trying to hurt me. At no point was this more clear than when the oldest picked up a steel stroller and hit me over the head with it. That was my breaking point as I grabbed the little brat and smacked him hard in the behind. All the screaming had, finally, caught the attention of our parents that came barging in to hear, well, why they could hear us. Back in those days, parents still strongly believe that children should be seen and not heard. The little brat started yelling that I'd hit him, causing his father to start going off on me. The middle sister tried defending me, saying that the brother had hit me first, but she got yelled at to shut up, and the father continued yelling at me. All the while my own mother, who knew perfectly well what these kids were like, just stood there listening to this father tearing me a new one. The kid's mother chipped in, that she just trusted me, and that I had betrayed their trust so badly. The little girl tried speaking up again, but was again shushed. Finally, the parents walked back outside, again leaving me behind to watch their stupid brats. So I guess I hadn't betrayed their trust so badly. My own mother hung behind for a moment, finally asking me what really happened. I told her, she apologized to me, and then again left me behind to go sit by the fire with her friends. I mentioned the fire specifically because somehow, while my mother was speaking to me, the oldest one had snuck out, gotten his hands on a fire poker, and was dipping it into the fire to stab me with it. Before you ask, I didn't see this myself. My mother actually told this to me after, as the little psycho had told that to his father when his father had asked what he needs that fire poker for. Cut forward to Monday, my last day of the holiday, my last day of watching these monsters before returning to school the next day, and the day of my great reward. I was hoping the Saturday incident wouldn't count too much against me, as the father had later apologized to me after my mother had told them what really happened, and the sister had confirmed my account. I'll admit I don't remember crap about what happened that last day, not until the very end with the parents arriving, rushing the kids out of the house, and handing me a plain chocolate bar and saying, Thanks for watching the kids all holiday! There really isn't any other end to this story. No big fallout, nothing unbelievable, just the reality that these parents had justified it to themselves that a chocolate bar was enough payment for someone that had just spent the majority of his holiday watching their demon spawns. I confronted my mother about it, asking her how she could be okay with this, but she had just said it's not worth getting upset about. After a month later, they had a falling out about something unrelated and never spoke again. They were not present at her funeral. Freaking jerks. I don't know how they could possibly justify in their mind that a chocolate bar is enough compensation for babysitting over the whole holiday season. I mean, what does that compensation come out to? Like one cent an hour or something? I don't even know what you could do in that kind of situation though. If you asked up front what were they going to do as the reward, I doubt they even knew at that point in time. They knew it wasn't going to be something much though. But you're also not really old enough to stand up for yourself and be like, nah, I'm not going to do this, because what are you going to do? Some context before the story. This happened a few weeks ago, and I was getting groceries for my dad, who's now 64 years old, 
at the supermarket really close to my house. The Asperger's syndrome one. This is going to be important for later. On that day, I was using a nice mask of Spider-Man. Yes, it's a Spider-Man one, and I actually really love it, because I'm a fan from Marvel. Made by my mum, who really loves making stuff with fabrics and things like that. She's now making masks for sale, and donates for some people. At the supermarket, I just got the stuff, and I go to the special line to wait on it, because I discovered I can use it because of my autism. An entitled mum had just got to the line with her 7-year-old old EK and tried to cut me and a nice 67 year old woman in the line. Hey, why'd you cut me? Oh dear, did you just cut us in the line? I'm just going to pass some things. It was almost 50 items with gummies, Doritos, soda, and of course toilet paper. It's gonna be quick. The nice employee, Annie. Hey, please come back on the line. I was scanning her items, points to the nice old lady. Ugh, okay. It was okay on that part, just a little bit of craziness, but it's okay. For no reason, people are cutting the line for everything here in Brazil in this quarantine time. But the kid just enters in the story. Mom, I want a mask like that, points at my mask. I just think in that moment, frick. My kid has been nice this whole week. Can you give your Superman mask for him? He needs it. First, this is not a Superman mask, it's from Spider-Man. Second, it's my only mask who my mum made for me. And three, it's not safe to give someone a mask that another person's using. So no, I can't give it to your child. Shut up, you idiot. Also, why the heck are you here in this line? This is a special line, and you look like you're 11 years old. What the heck, I'm 15. He's here because of his autism condition. Now the special line accepts people with autism. Look at the sign. Points to the sign at the autistic symbol. Basically, it is that kind of scarf that is used the months to show about breast cancer, only made with colored puzzle pieces. This is crap. Why can he go in the line if I'm a single mom? I can't do it for nothing, lady. So at this point, I saw the face of EM turning red, and the impossible happens. You know what? You're a little autism censored. I've had enough of this freaking society not helping single mothers like me. After she said that, she just holds onto my face on the part of my nose and mouth to take off my mask, who literally made me almost suffocate because she's pressing her hand against my face, grabbing so hard on my mask. This was painful. After the scene was going, the guard saw this and just got running from the EM, with the EK cheering for his mum, while I was almost suffocating, me struggling for air. P please, I can't br- Give me your mask, you little son of a bitch! The guards were pushing her off me with a powerful push that just breaks the elastic of one of the sides, making it a pendant on one of my ears, and her hand was gone from my mouth, finally. I just tried to fix it, but it was broken for real, and I started to sob because it was one of the worst moments I've ever had in my entire life. And that mask was the only one I have of it, and I really love it. Me, now sobbing. What the heck? You just broke my mask! Come on, my mom made it with a lot of love for me. Hehehe, <laughs> now you don't have a mask. I am now being held from the guards. Let me out, I have rights. Holy crap, I am so sorry. I can make some discount for you. Me cleaning my tears. It's okay, thank you. Are you okay, kid? She really had strength in that arm. I'm okay, don't worry. EM still screaming nonsense. Get your hands off of me, you N-word. Yes, she literally said that for real. An equivalent for the N-word, but in Portuguese. The guards just took her to the exit of the supermarket, with the EK following her mom. Well, the closure of my story was, my mask got fixed by my mom. Thanks, mom. I love you so much. She got banned from almost all the markets, supermarkets, hypermarkets, something markets, from my city, and also I'm fine. I don't need to be worried about it. There's a big difference between being at a disadvantage and actually being disabled. Yes, being a single mother, it does mean that you'll be at a disadvantage and some things will be harder for you. But even families with a mum and a dad often just have one parent that takes the kids to the shops anyway. So you're probably in a very similar situation to other parents whilst you're at the shops themselves. Whereas if you have a disability, that's something that you carry with you everywhere you go for potentially the rest of your life. Even if single motherhood was somehow on the same level of disability, how does that give you the right to push in front of them in the line? That makes no sense. The backstory. So it was EM son's wedding and it went pretty normally. I wasn't there so I really don't know about it in much detail. 
I was giving my exam at the time, and there is somewhat of a ritual where the families from the groom's side throw parties after the wedding is over in terms of celebrating a successful wedding. And my family and my aunt, yes, the choreographer from the last post, decided to throw the party together so that we could divide the work like prepping the food, the decoration and so on. Since neither of us were really interested in throwing a party after EM's behavior and how she treated us, we informed that we will be throwing a combined party so that we could save on money, and EM started screaming at my dad and my uncle, saying that she wants separate parties because it's tradition. She didn't throw a party at my dad's wedding, and she said that if she wasn't given separate parties, she wouldn't be giving us the wedding DVDs and our reception pictures, and started squabbling about how we ruined her son's wedding, and we are responsible for everything, and now we won't even give them two separate parties because we are cheapskates. Main story. So now my uncle and dad were angry. My parents and my uncle and aunt, so none of the kids were there, went to their house to discuss about the situation and end the whole fight that was made up for no actual reason. Note, from here I am paraphrasing everything off of what my dad told me about what happened at the time. They discussed about the wedding, first on who actually ruined the Sengit and Haldi celebrations. They discussed about how much money the two of our families, mine and my uncles, had lost money on the celebration because of providing food during the days we practiced for the Sangeet and the amount of damages they did to our homes in terms of breaking, stealing stuff and leaving the place completely dirty and still complained about the food. The food was amazing at the time for your information and how bad the dancers were and how my aunt got paid literally one tenth of the amount of a normal choreographer for one dance. After that, they discussed about the parties and why she wanted two separate parties and after discussing more, more like arguing, about it for two hours, EM gave in and said that she wanted two parties because of course, it's more than one, and they could have more fun. Now, I don't think that anyone can really decide how the party being set up by someone else should be, when, where, and how to do it, because that's someone else's party and they are only a part of it and shouldn't have any say in what's going to be done. So, after the whole argument was over, my parents and my uncle, and his wife, decided that they wouldn't be giving a single party because they had already lost a lot of money on the wedding, and so on. They had to go through a lot because of them, and plus they weren't treated with respect. Listening to this, the EM started bawling out and crying, and screaming that she is not being respected here, how she had to work around everything in the wedding. She just sat there and looked pretty for the camera and the guests, and then faked a heart attack. Yes, a heart attack. Something about my family, heart diseases run throughout my family. My granddad died due to a heart attack. My dad has severe heart issues and he's working on them. I also may have heart issues in the future. EM is my granddad's sister and she also had a bypass surgery on her heart a few years ago. And she was high risk too. So even though she was faking it, everyone believed it. The ambulance and everything was called and when the medic said that she will have to be taken to the hospital, she magically got fixed and saying that she was completely fine and safe. Nothing happened to her and it was just a small stroke. She just didn't want to pay hospital bills. She's delusional as heck. And she immediately stood up and did a little exercise to prove she was fine. My dad said it was hilarious and embarrassing to see that his own blood acted like monkeys and apes and how manipulative they can be. So my family finally decided not to throw a party and breaks ties with the whole family and it's been two years since we've spoken to them. Conclusion. So we broke ties with EM's family and they didn't get a single party because of their own narcissism and butthole-like nature. It seems like if there's any time for family drama to come up, it's at one of these big type of events, a funeral or a wedding. So if you've got something big coming up and you know there's going to be potential drama, my guess is that you should probably sort it out before the event actually happens because it's probably going to come out anyway and in much a worse way. Plus, do you really want to ruin one of those special days? However, that's not always possible because if only one side wants resolution, then it's just not going to happen, is it? Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.